Hi guys, welcome back. So for today, we are going to have the balance scorecard. The balance scorecard is a strategic management tool that evaluates performance relating to four perspectives. Financial, customer, internal business, and learning and growth. These are the four balance scorecard perspectives. From our discussion in the last video, we have explored different financial performance evaluation measures. This time, however, we are going to expand these performance measures to include those that are non-financial ones. That is, they relate to non-financial performance evaluation measures. The balance scorecard is basically a tool that would encompass different performance measures and targets. But why bother talking about financial performance measures? Financial performance evaluation measures may include variances, segment margin, and return on investment. Why won't we just focus on this financial performance evaluation measures? To give you the short answer, we would incorporate non-financial measures in addition to financial measures because financial measures can cause short-sighted or myopic behavior. Let us say, for example, that you are the CEO of a pharmaceutical subsidiary in a conglomerate. A pharmaceutical subsidiary in a conglomerate. You would want to show to the holding company that you have a good performance. That is, you want to impress your boss. Let us say that you are evaluated on the basis of ROI. And here comes a cure for COVID. However, the cure for COVID-19 may take five years to develop. Are you going to take that cure as your project? Well, if you are evaluated on the basis of return on investment, the tendency is that you are focused on increasing the returns only for the current year rather than looking into the longer term. That is the problem of financial performance measures. Because you want to increase your return on investment, you would do everything to increase revenues and minimize costs in the short run. But this could be at the expense of the long run. So if you are given the opportunity to invest in a project, such as having a cure for COVID-19, you're not going to take this project because it will take years to prosper. This is again the problem of financial performance evaluation measures. Now, what can we do in order to prevent this from happening? This is where financial measures and non-financial measures differ. Financial measures tend to be lag indicators. An indicator is said to be a lag indicator if it says something about what had happened already. Return on investment is an example of a lag indicator because it will measure ROI, the performance, in the year that has already happened. Meanwhile, non-financial measures tend to be lead indicators. Lead indicators say something about what is yet to happen. To give you an illustration as to why non-financial measures tend to be lead indicators, let us look at this balance scorecard perspectives. You're going to note that we have financial perspective, customer perspective, internal business perspective, and learning and growth perspective. If we're going to have performance measures other than financial performance measures, the short-sightedness can be discarded. How? Looking at the balance scorecard perspectives, ultimately, companies would want to be profitable. That is, they have financial goals. However, when we evaluate managers on the basis of financial performance measures alone, they tend to be 
myopic. They tend to have short-sighted behavior. So, let us say, for example, we are operating a new company, and hence, we would want to have profit targets. So, the financial goal would be to have a high return on investment and high residual income, perhaps. However, where would this financial performance come from? Well, to have good profits, you would need more revenues. Where will your revenues come from? They will come from your customers. So, in order to arrive at what could possibly happen a year from now, we should look at how the customers view us. This would require the use of customer perspective measures. We may measure things like customer satisfaction, customer retention, customer growth, etc. Next, what would make our customers happy? Well, for our customers to be happy, we should provide a good product and service. Products and services that would give high customer value. Hence, we need to look at our internal business. Internal business perspective measures would talk about things like operations and the like. Now, how would we have good internal business perspective? Well, we would need learning and growth. We would need more investments in information systems and employee education. If you are going to look at it, the four perspectives are actually interconnected. So, what is the lag indicator? The financial performance measures. What would indicate good future financial performance? That would be your customer perspective measures. Good future customer perspective measures. Internal business. Good future internal business learning and growth. As you can see, if the evaluation system would be designed in such a way that there are lead indicators of performance, it would actually cause our managers to look into the longer future rather than being confined to short-sighted behavior. We will focus our discussion this time in the internal business perspective. Internal business perspective is concerned with the processes that generate and bring the customer value proposition. It emphasizes on all the activities required for the company to excel at creating the value expected by the customers, both productively and efficiently. One of the internal business perspective measures is the cycle time. Now, to give you a sample case on the cycle time, refer to the following. Miles Company's finance manager has decided to use delivery performance measures for performance evaluation. She requested the production manager to submit data that will be used for the evaluation. The production manager submitted the following data, typical of the time involved, to complete orders waiting time from orders being placed to start of production, six days. Waiting time from start of production to completion, two days. Process time, seven days. Move time, four days. Inspection time, one day. Okay. There are basically two types of cycle times that we can refer to. First would be our delivery cycle time. This is the period from when the customer orders until production is completed. Next is the manufacturing cycle time. This is the time from when production has started to production completed. Now, we are going to start with the delivery cycle time. An order is to be made. Before production starts, time may be consumed. That is, there will be a lag 
after an order by the customer was made up to when production starts. We call this the wait time. When production has started, ideally, only actual processing time will be spent. That is, the only time that will be spent will be on the things that would be productive. However, during actual production, it's possible to have time spent on things that do not add value, such as moving an item from one place to another, inspecting the item, or simply having an item idle in the queue, being next in line for the next process because of inefficient planning. These are all part of the time from when production starts until when production ends. Now, to calculate our delivery cycle time and manufacturing cycle time, let us go back to the case. Waiting time from when the order is being placed to the start of the production, you have six days. This is the wait time. Waiting time from the start of production to completion. This is actually the time when the product is in the queue in line for the next process. Process time, this is the only thing that's productive, seven days. Move time, four days. Inspection time, one day. Okay? So again, wait time, six days. Queue time, two days. Process time, seven days. Move time, four days. Inspection time, one day. That would give you a total delivery cycle time of 20 days, a total manufacturing cycle time, 14 days. Of all of these days, only seven days is spent on actual processing. Now, we can as well calculate the cycle efficiency. We can calculate the delivery cycle efficiency. Seven out of 20 days is productive you would have 35%. Manufacturing cycle efficiency, 7 over 14 days, you have 50%. Okay? So, internal business perspective measures, these are the measures that basically say something about your efficiency in your production facilities, in your operations. Other internal business perspective measures include Velocity, this is the speed of production. How many units can be produced in a period of time? And productivity, the ratio of output to input in manufacturing an item. Now, in this video, we have explored non-financial performance measures. But in the next video, we are going to talk about transfer pricing. This has an impact on financial performance. And hence, we will go back to financial performance measures. So, that is it. Stay tuned. Like, share, and subscribe.